How many days does it take to catch every fish in Stardew Valley? At first glance, two answers come to mind. One is that it takes until winter 15 to catch every fish because of the three night market fish. This used to be the case until 1.5 when magic bait was added, allowing night market fish as well as any other fish to be caught outside of their normal seasons. Is it just a case of getting magic bait as fast as possible then? Rushing entry to the island on spring 12 and rushing the 101 gold walnuts to enter Key's walnut room over spring 12 and spring 13, a feat that has never been done? Nope. Magic bait lets you reel in fish of any season, time and weather, but crucially not fish of any location. If there is a location that is only available after a specific date, that date is the earliest day that all fish can be caught by, and there is such a location. In fact, there are two. The Witch's Swamp and the Mutant Bug Lair. Both are not available until Summer 3 when the railroad entrance is opened. How do you get all fish by Summer 3? Day 1 of Spring Before the run begins for real, there are two important factors to consider that apply to the creation of the file. The first is a farm map used. I picked the forest farm for the sole reason that this is the best option to get hardwood quickly. The second is a seed. The seed I use is 748-141-593. And this seed is chosen as it fulfills two essential criteria in the run that will be explained later on. After moving my bed and TV around, I plant the parsnips as normal and chop some trees as normal, but the first difference is that I till up a chicken statue so that I can get the 250G from the archaeology quest. Before I give the statue to Gunther though, I go to the beach. This run will be the first run that I do in which I do a strategy called clay farming. I till up 53 clay worth 1060G, then submit the chicken statue to the museum, buy a single salad from the saloon, and get a single cookie from Evelyn's trash. I go to the carpenter's shop next, but before I go inside, I dig up Robin's front yard, getting another 30 clay. Robin gives me 1660G for the clay, and the 250G from the archaeology quest gets me to 2190G. With 2000G, and 2 hours until Pierre's shop closes, I buy the first backpack upgrade 3 days earlier than I usually do. Then it is back to the beach. I eat my salad and the cola gust throughout and convert that energy into digging up the whole beach for 68 more clay. And on my way back from the farm, I pick up a daffodil and a wild horseradish for the community centre, then ship my clay and beach forage. With nothing left to do, I go to the forest, pick up the spring onions and the dandelion and chop even more trees. Overnight, I get level 1 foraging and 1500G. Day 2 of Spring The first thing I do today is go around the farm and mine stones that I know have coal in them. This is because these stones have about a 55% chance of giving 6 XP if they drop coal for complicated reasons. And I want as much mining XP as I can get before the mines become available on day 5. Then I go to the beach to meet Willy. With my new bamboo rod, I start fishing. This is because fishing is an easier and more fun alternative to clay farming, and I want fishing XP for later on. In addition, one of my goals of this run is to attempt to make it to Ginger Island on Spring 12, the earliest day it can possibly be done. This isn't necessary for this challenge, but is necessary for challenges I'm considering in the future. Part of this goal is to get 47,500G before 11pm on day 6, and extra money from fishing on days 2, 3 and 4 will reduce the requirements from days 5 and 6. Even if I don't get to Ginger Island on day 12, I will at least learn what changes would be needed to achieve that feat. At 2pm, Bubbles appear near Willy's shop, and I fish there until right before Willy's shop closes. However, despite all the fishing and the bubbles, I don't quite get to level 2 fishing, which is needed to buy the fiberglass rod. 
Usually it is the money I'm short on, not the fishing XP, so my best guess is that the extra time breaking those stones made the difference between level 1 and level 2 fishing. Without the ability to buy the fiberglass rod, there's no point in selling my fish, so I put my fish in the chest at the farm and go to the mountain lake. On the way, I till up a bone flute. Submitting this to the museum gets me a flute block, giving me the ability to get 5 gold walnuts from the mermaid puzzle much later on. When I get to the lake, I go to a second set of bubbles. I fish in these bubbles until I pass out and get level 1, 2 and 3 fishing overnight. Day 3 of Spring Today starts with mining more stones for mining XP, then I go to Willy's shop to sell some fish, buy the fiberglass rod and some extra bait. Then I go to Clint and buy a single copper ore so that I can craft a furnace tomorrow. The rest of the night is spent fishing at the lake. At 7.50pm I get a diamond and a Neptune's glaive from a treasure chest. This run is blessed. In addition, when the clock hits midnight, I get two fire quartz from another treasure chest. One less item to get from the mines. At the end of the night, I have 7,500 G worth of fish and diamonds, then I pass out getting level 4 and level 5 fishing, and get the fisher profession so that fish sell for more. Before moving on to day 4, I check the weather report for day 5. To get to Jiju Island on day 12, it must be sunny on day 5, otherwise the cutscene that unlocks the community centre will not play. Normally, players count steps to force a sunny day, but I winged it. And the day 5 weather is... Day 4 of Spring. Sunny. Once again, I mine the stones on the farm. However, today I mine all of them, as the ones that don't drop coal still give 1 XP. And this is needed to have a chance at getting level 2 mining today. However, I don't get level 2 mining. I'm short by 174 XP, which is the equivalent of 35 more procs of the coal code. If I played on the standard farm, the extra space would lead to more stones and thus more mining XP, but then the margin on hardwood gain would be lower. Also, I don't know at the time of recording how much mining XP I have, so I don't reset to only get level 1 mining. Then I sell my fish to Willy, but only to get to 5300 G to buy 44 copper ore and later on the copper axe upgrade. To complete the boiler room on day 6, I need the copper axe on day 6, as the spring foraging bundle and the construction bundle are the only bundles outside of the boiler room that I can complete in 6 days. Then I buy 44 copper ore and craft a single furnace. I fish at the lake while smelting my ore one bar at a time. The last bar is done at 3pm. I rush to Clint. 10 minutes pass. 20. 30. 40. I enter Clint's with 10 minutes left on the clock and buy the axe upgrade. Phew, that was close. Now that my money is drained, I spend the rest of the night fishing. After passing out, I get level 1 mining and level 6 fishing overnight. Day 5 of Spring In order to get to Ginger Island on Spring 12, 47,500 G must be obtained by 11pm on Spring 6, 42,500 to complete the vault, and another 5,000 for the Joja membership before Joja Mart closes. To do this on the seed I am using, I need to get Mining 5 today, as well as reach floor 85 in the mines. Doing both grants me the ability to do the elevator trick on a tile that produces two Omni Geodes, two Magma Geodes, one Coal, and one Gold Ore. I load into the world. Marnie meets me and gives me a cat. I name him Sardine. Then I ship my gems and fish, leaving my gold chubs and iridium cups for energy in the mines. Then I wait until 8am as that is when the cutscene that opens the community centre is available. While I wait, I plant 6 mixed seeds. I enter the town at precisely 8am. One quirk of this cutscene is that if you watch this cutscene, you spawn in front of the community centre, whereas if you skip it, you spawn at the town entrance. 
I watched the whole 1 minute 50 second cutscene to save 10 in-game minutes of walking. Then I read the scroll which unlocks the wizard cutscene for tomorrow, then go to the mines right before 9am. In the mines I go down level by level. To have any chance at all of reaching floor 85 today, I need to spend as little time as possible on each floor, especially as my daily luck isn't perfect. A secondary goal is to get all the items to complete the boiler room. I need to smelt a copper bar, iron bar and gold bar. I need a quartz, earth crystal and frozen tear. Finally, I need one soul essence and one void essence. However, these are needed by about 10pm tomorrow so I can miss a few and be fine. At 1.30pm I reach a monster floor. Normally this is a big obstacle that will be bypassed with a staircase, but I have the Neptune's Glaive so I go through these enemies like a hot knife through butter. It takes one in-game hour to get to the next floor, which isn't bad. I make my way floor by floor, stone by stone. All the way at the end of the day, at 1.30am, I finally reach floor 85. However, I'm only at mining level 3. There is no way that it is possible to reach level 5 mining in the last half hour. On the plus side, I have every item needed for the boiler room with the exception of a gold bar, which is in the furnace smelting overnight, a soul essence and a void essence. I spend the last half hour getting these two items. I get a void essence from a void spirit and a soul essence from a metal head. Then I immediately pass out, getting level 1 farming, level 2 mining, level 1 combat and level 3 mining. In addition, I make 5000 G towards what will be my goal of 47,500 G tomorrow. Day 6 of Spring The first thing I do is visit the wizard. What I would have to do today is visit the wizard, elevator on the tile until about 2-3 pm, then go to Clint's. I would open my geodes in an order that maximizes the sell price of the contents, then I would get any last items to complete the boiler room and the vault, in my case just wood and hardwood, and finally I would buy the Jojo membership for 5k. However, I don't have level 5 mining today, which means that the overpowered Jode spot is not available yet. I'm short by 1318 XP, which is the equivalent of 9 diamond nodes or 73 gold nodes. Level 2 mining before day 5 would help with this, but only by a bit. What this means is that at this point I'm no longer going for a day 12 ginger island and thus my primary goal for today is to get level 5 mining. Once I've met the wizard, I submit a few artifacts to the museum, retrieve the 9 cauliflower seeds and the flute block, and then go to Clint to get my copper axe. Then I return to the farm, chop the stumps, then go to the mines to retrieve my items stored there. Now I just have 100 wood left to get. I get 50 from the trees to the right of the carpenter shop and 50 bought from Robin. With 200 wood and all the other items I need, I go to the community center. I complete the spring crops bundle and the construction bundle. Then I complete the whole boiler room. I could buy one of the vault bundles, but there is no point and I need the money for tomorrow. Then I go back to the farm, plant my cauliflower, pick up some food, then go back to the mines. I enter at 5.30pm and farm mining XP by repeatedly entering floor 81, mining the gem nodes that appear, and blowing up clusters of gold nodes with cherry bombs crafted from copper mined from floor 31. I do this until 12.30am where I go back to the farm to ship my gems, spring seeds and fish. Then I go to bed getting level 2 foraging and level 4 mining overnight but not level 5 mining. Day 7 of Spring I start today not by going into the mines but by chopping the stumps. This gets me more hardwood to fix the boat later. Then I go to the travelling carts. One of the requirements of the seed for this run was a very good geotile. The other 
was to be able to buy all five battery packs from the traveling carts. And all five are being sold today. I buy all five batteries for 10,000 G total, then return to the mines. I once again repeatedly load floor 81 and use cherry bombs on any clusters of gold nodes. Then, once I'm out of cherry bombs, I go back to floor 31 to get more copper to craft more cherry bombs. I have 584 mining XP left to get today. I did the math, and at the rate I got it yesterday, I would have needed to enter the mines at 11.50am instead of 5.30pm. I made a few routing mistakes, but I'm not sure where I would pull another 5.5 hours from. I think I would have to rework the route from the start to pull that off. Nevertheless, right before 2pm, I get level 5 mining, so I go to floors 5, 15, 25 and 21 to farm green slimes to open the Adventurers Guild, and to get more copper to craft more furnaces to smelt all the gold I have. I defeat all 10 green slimes at 4.20pm, then focus on copper for furnaces until 12.30am, where I return to the farm to ship my miscellaneous sellables. Then I go to bed and get level 3 foraging and level 5 mining, where I get the Geoldist profession. Day 8 of Spring I start by watering the crops. These will get me farming level 2 once grown, but that will be a while as cauliflowers grow slowly. Then, back to the mines. The overpowered geode spot is finally available, two days after what is needed to reach Ginger Island on day 12. I reset floor 85 over and over, and by the time Clint's shop is about to close, I have 135 Omni Geodes and 131 Magma Geodes, plus a few Frozen Geodes and regular Geodes. I go to Clint's with a bit of time to spare. I open my Geodes, selling the minerals every time my inventory gets full. The order in which I open these geodes is aimed to maximize the amount of minerals that sell for a lot of gold, such as Big Sight, Fire Opal, Hellvite, Neptunite, and Star Shards, as well as other items such as Iridium Ore. I even get a Prismatic Shard, but I just sell it moments later. By the time I've used up my geodes and sold all the minerals, I have 42,800 G, which is just barely enough to complete the vault. However, I also want to buy the Jojo membership today, so I sell my iron ore, half my gold ore, and three quarters of my coal. This gets me to 46,100 G with only 1,400 to go. I submit a few items to the museum, which gets me 9 melon seeds for Ginger Island. Then I cough up 42,500 G to complete the vault and return to the mines. With access to the Adventurers Guild, I am able to sell items up until 10pm, but only weapons, footwear, and mob loot. I farm void spirits until I have 10 void essence, then go to the guild. Selling these items gets me to 4,968 G, which means that I am short by only 32. Forgetting that I have 100 G in a quest reward, I go back to the mines, get two more void essences, and sell that to the guild. Then I make it to Jojo Mart with 3 hours to spare. I buy the Jojo membership and now everything I must do today is done. I get my iridium ore smelting and spend a few more hours geode farming, then return to the farm at 10.30pm. I ship the miscellaneous geode artifacts, then spend the last hours of the night chopping the stumps for hardwood and go to bed at 1am getting level 2 combat. Day 9 of Spring With the boiler room and the vaults completed, and the Jojo membership bought, I now need to buy the panning upgrade, the bridge repair, and the greenhouse repair back to back to back. I retrieve 7 iridium bars from the furnaces at the mines, and then geode farm from 7am to 3pm. At 3.20pm, right before Clint closes, I go to his shop. Selling my gold and iridium bars gets me 10,000 G, which means I just need to get another 8000 G to be able to buy the cheapest Jojo upgrade. Opening my geodes gets me to 30,000 G, which is enough to buy the bridge repair, so I change my route to buy that today and the panning upgrade tomorrow, just so that my money needs for tomorrow is less. Then, before I go to Jojo Mart, I buy 15 artifact tribes from the Desert Trader. 14 is a number that guarantees 35k worth of treasure to be sold for day 11 money, and I get an extra one as a spare. With that out of the way, I go to Jojo Mart, buy the bridge repair, 
and then return to the mines to farm some more geodes. When the clock hits 10.30pm, I leave the mines and return to the farm to chop the stumps. A few mixed seeds gets planted too, but I keep the total at 15 so I don't need a scarecrow. Then, for the last hour of the night, I chop a few trees in case I need the wood later and then go to bed, getting level 6 mining and level 4 foraging. Day 10 of spring. I water the crops, then chop the stumps. I'm upgrading my axe to iron today, so I can't chop these at the end of the day. Then I go to the mines, retrieve my iridium, smelt some gold, and spend half an in-game hour geode farming. When Clint's shop opens, I go to him and open my geodes. Just like yesterday, I maximise the money I get from geode minerals. However, I also open my artifact troves at precise times to get treasure chests worth 5k and gold pumpkins worth 2.5k. When I have 27 geodes left, I open an Omni Geode and get a Prismatic Shard. I'm not planning on selling this one. I continue opening geodes, and when I'm done, I have 30,000 G as well as 11 treasure chests and 4 gold pumpkins worth 65k gold. I must ship these today, as I will not be able to open geodes tomorrow. Then, before I leave, I buy the Iron Axe upgrade. I take a quick trek to the desert get a galaxy sword with my prismatic shard, then go to Georgia Mart to buy the panning upgrade, before returning to the farm. I ship my treasure, the rest of my iridium bars, and my miscellaneous artifacts. At this point in the day, everything I must do today is done, so I go back to the mines. Here, I primarily farm for iron and copper, but I'm also looking for gems for the Ginger Island 4 gem puzzle. I find a topaz, aquamarine, and an amethyst with just an emerald to find. Before the end of the night, I retrieve the 7 iridium bar smelter today, shipping 2 and saving 5 to repair the boat. Day 11 of Spring I start today with 82,000 G and by the end of today, I will have spent all of it. I start by watering the crops, then I go to the quarry. This gets me the cutscene with Willy, where he gives me the best hat in the game. Then I go to the mines. The main thing I'm doing is farming for copper and iron. I need 32 copper bars and iron bars to craft sprinklers for Ginger Island. In addition, I need iron ore for bombs for the volcano mines, and I need copper ore for reasons. Once Jojo Mart opens, I buy the greenhouse repair, then I buy the second backpack upgrade from Pierre. Then I buy the iridium rod, five crab pots, baits, and trap bobbers from Willy. Then I go to the desert. I buy deluxe speed grow so my melons will be done faster, and I buy 128 beet seeds for the harvesting nuts on Ginger Island. The choice of beets over parsnips leads to another benefit that will be revealed later. Then I buy 50 salads and 15 coffees from the saloon, leaving me with only 1k gold. The rest of the day is spent iron farming and copper farming, but I take a break to place and bait 5 crab pots. Remember, crab pot fish counts towards the master angler achievement. Day 12 of spring. Today, my iron axe is ready. I start by washing the crops, then I harvest my crab pots, getting me a snail and a periwinkle. I move two crab pots to tiles that will produce crayfish, then go to the mines to farm for iron and copper while waiting for Clint's shop to open. At 9, I go to Clint. On the way, I get the Jojo completion cutscene. This unlocks the letter that opens the back room of Willy's shop, letting me repair his boat. I won't be able to repair it tomorrow, however, as a festival is on. Then I get my iron pickaxe from Clint, place and bait three crab pots at the beach, and return to the farm to chop the stumps and logs. I got eight hardwood from the first large log, when my route assumed I would get ten hardwood per log. Oh no! Anyway, I check how much foraging XP I need to get level 5 foraging, and it is achievable today. I chop the stumps on the left side of the farm, chop the log blocking the entrance to the secret woods, and chop the stumps in the secret woods. 
On my way out of the secret woods, I chopped the trees and reached level 5 foraging without needing to chop trees at the farm. The rest of the night is spent copper and iron farming. I look for an emerald too, but don't find one. Then I go to bed and get level 5 foraging and level 3 combat overnight and get the forester profession for extra hardwood from large logs. Day 13 of Spring Today is the Egg Festival, but for this challenge, the important thing to consider is that every milestone is delayed one day because of this festival. Today, it is impossible to enter Jojo Mart and buy any community upgrades. The Jojo Completion cutscene will not play, and Willy's shop cannot be entered to repair or ride the boat. I water my crops and go to the secret woods, chopping my large logs and stumps along the way. When I'm done with hardwood, I fish up a wood skip so I don't have to return here. I spend some time at the mines, then once access to the festival is over, I harvest my two crab pots outside the mines and go to the beach. As predicted, I have one lobster, one shrimp and one oyster. I then place one crab pot to the left of Willy's shop and four below it. I check the door to Willy's shop and as expected, it's locked. Then I spend the rest of the night in the mines, farming for iron, copper and other things. Right before 1am, I find an emerald node which completes all four gems for the four gem puzzle on Ginger Island. Day 14 of Spring Today is the day I repair the boat. But I also want to fish up some fish so I don't have to catch them later. I start by watering the crops, then I fish up a sunfish before going to the beach. I have a mussel, crab and cockle, and now I am done with crab pot fish. I spent three hours fishing for a halibut, don't get one, and then repair Willy's boat. One thing that I forgot until this point is that while I don't need any museum rewards other than the melon seeds, I do need to open the sewer to catch the mutant carp. I open my omni geodes, submit the new minerals, and now I have 23 items left to get. Also, I buy 75 Joja Colas for reasons. Then, I fish up a ghost fish in the mines, a smallmouth bass and bream at the river, and finish with a stonefish. I try to get an ice pip, but I don't get one today. Then, I go to bed and get level 7 fishing overnight. Day 15 of Spring Today is the first day on Ginger Island. However, I can't take the boat until 8am so I start by watching my cauliflowers and fish in front of Willy's shop where I catch a halibut, a fish I hadn't caught yet. Then when the clock hits 8, I take the boat to Ginger Island. As usual, my strategy boils down to east, north, west. I go east, I get the nut from the nut bush, the nut from Leo's tree, and feed Leo's parrot one of my nuts which unlocks Island North. After that, I go to the secret area. I complete the puzzle and get the nut bush, giving me 6 more nuts. In Island North, I get every nut I can get from nut bushes, till spots and the one by flinging a stone at the tree. Finally, in Island West, I get these nuts by going in an anti-clockwise direction. I go up, get the till spots and nut bushes and get a nut from unaliving the tiger slimes there. I get 2 nut bushes by Key's walnut room, then go down and across the beach getting two till spots, the beach ducky nut, the nut from the shipwreck, and a nut from a muscle node. Then I spend the rest of the day clearing space to plant my beets and melons. The melons should be ready on spring 24 if I don't miss a watering day, and the beets don't need to be ready until the same day, so I don't need to water them for the first few days. The last hour is spent fishing. I get two midnight carps, a blue discus, and three gold walnuts. Day 16 of Spring I start by watering the melons, tilling the till spot on the beach, and getting another nut from my muscle node. Then I go into the volcano. I start by going left at the lava river, and get the two nut bushes in the hidden area. After getting a nut from a monster in the opening floor, I go to the first floor. This time in the volcano, I have an advantage. 
I updated my copy of the map predictor so I can tell which stones and crates have nuts in them. I get a nut from a stone on floor 1. I get two nuts from stones on floor 2. I get two nuts from stones on floor 3, which means I'm done with stone nuts. I get nothing from floor 4. I get a nut from a crate on floor 5. And finally, I get two nuts from crates on floor 9, as well as a nut from a rare chest. I reach the forge at 4pm, get the two nut bushes here, and leave as I don't have enough cinder shards to enchant anything. With 9 hours left in the day, I fix the dicksite bridge, rescue the professor, and get 4 nuts from the 3 nut bushes and till spot above the dig site. Then I mine the bone nodes I know have fossilised legs as well as artefacts in them. At 7pm I'm done with the island for today so I go back to Stardew Valley. Returning to the farm I water the cauliflowers and gather additional resources to take back to Ginger Island tomorrow. The rest of the night is spent geode farming and I go to bed right after midnight getting level 4 combat and level 8 mining overnight. Day 17 of Spring One last watering before the cauliflowers are done. I till up a rusty spur and a rusty spoon, retrieve my iridium bar and gold bars from my furnaces, and geode farm for a single hour. I enter the museum and submit the 5 artifacts I have on me, then rush to Ginger Island. Once there, I go to Island East and get a mummified frog by whacking the weeds there. This is actually my second try, as it is only spring 17, there hasn't been as many days for the weeds to build up, so I'm less likely to get a frog from breaking all the weeds. Then I get my fourth muscle known nut, submit my mummified frog to the field office, and get two nuts from completing the two island surveys. With 20 nuts in my pocket, I repair the island resorts, which also unlocks island southeast. I get the nuts from the starfish pond, and the nuts from the till spot, but not the nuts inside the cove, as I can get that when I do the darts minigame. Then I play the song for the mermaid, using my flute block from the museum. I tune the block, walk past, and then destroy the block, taking great care not to trigger the block twice. I get the five nuts, and then leave. I spend a few hours fishing. I catch a tuna, line fish, and a snake skull, as well as two gold walnuts. Then, I go to the dig site via the Parrot Express and get a fossilised tail from panning before going to the volcano. I get a nut from a monster at the start and a nut from a monster on floor 3 but don't go any further as it is getting late and I want to sleep on the island tonight. Day 18 of Spring Today, the cauliflowers are finally ready. I get a free topaz from a gem bird then go to the farm to harvest my cauliflowers, which gets me to level 2 farming. I have an hour to kill, so I spend two of them fishing at the river, catching a catfish, but not a shad. Then I open my Omni Geodes and submit my gems and artifacts to the museum, leaving me with nine left to get to unlock the sewer. Returning to Ginger Island, I clear the farm of stones, twigs, stumps, logs, and weeds in order to encode spawning of artifact spots and I get another nut from a muscle node. It's volcano time next. I get a nut from a crate on floor 1, a nut from a monster on floor 3, but then leave at 8pm by submitting 5 nuts to create the mid volcano exit. I go to the forge and enchant my fishing rod with the preserving enchantment. I think this is ideal as it will make the magic bait I get last longer. Then I leave the forge as I don't have enough cinder shards to enchant anything else. I fish at the ocean at Island West, catch a super cucumber, but then decide to fish at the dig site instead so that I can get a fossilized spine. I get one at 1am, go to bed, and get level 2 farming overnight. Day 19 of Spring With farming level 2, I craft 32 sprinklers and place them to water my patch of melons and beets. Although the beets are dry today, the result of the last two rain days is that I don't have to water them. I did have to water the melons, but I didn't realize until rewatching the footage. Whoops. I get my last muscle node golden walnut, then get some coconuts from the trees. I was hoping to get a gold coconut by this point, but since I haven't been lucky with that, I can at least guarantee a second gold coconut 
by collecting 10 coconuts to trade with the island trader when I unlock them. I also get the nuts in the till spot above Birdie's hut unlocked by a journal note. Then I go into the volcano. I have one nut left from a common chest, one nut from an enemy, one nut from a crate, and also a fossilized bat to get. Would you believe that all I got was a nut from an enemy on floor 2? Ignore the dragon tooth club. I enchant my pickaxe with powerful so that it mines better, then spend the rest of the night fishing before going to bed, getting level 8 fishing overnight. Day 20 of spring. First thing I do is go to the beach. I till 4 times, then till up a snake vertebra. Then I harvest the palm trees, get to 10 coconuts, and get a gold coconut as well. The dig size next. I just blow it up to get the fossilized ribs, as there's nothing else I need from here. I submit the fossils to save on inventory space, then return to Stardew Valley. I till up an ornamental fan from the beach on my way to the museum, submit my gems and artifacts, and open my gold coconut to get a gold walnut, then go straight back to Ginger Island. Opening the first gold coconut doesn't just give a gold walnut, it also makes gold coconuts likelier from most sources. I cast my line into the forge, and catch a lava eel first try, then go into the volcano. I get a nut from a common chest on floor 2, and a nut from a crate on floor 4, and I'm finally done with the volcano. Except for one thing, the fossilized bats. After all this time, all these stones bombed, I haven't gotten a single one to drop. I'm not sure this run is blessed anymore. Well, bat or no bat, I go into the pirate's cove at 8pm. Each game of darts is one first try, then I get the till spot in here, and fish up a stingray. With 10 nuts in my pocket, I fix the island trader and get a second gold coconut. The rest of the night is spent fishing. I get the last two artifacts to get the rusty key and open the sewer, and then go to bed, getting level 6 combat overnight. Day 21 of Spring I fish a bit more, then go to Clint. I open two magma geodes, then my gold coconut, and get a fossilized skull, the last item to complete the large animal fossil. The last two artifacts are given to the museum. I'll be able to access the sewers tomorrow. I try to fish for an ice pip, but those are rare and I don't get one. I also buy enough coffee for the rest of the run, then go back to Ginger Island. Submitting the fossilized skull gets me 6 nuts, and I finally have enough that I don't need to get any more gold walnuts until the beets and melons are done growing. The rest of the day spent fishing for fishing XP, but nothing of note is obtained. Day 22 of Spring I start by fishing an island west. I get an octopus on the line, but the octopus escapes my grasp. I do get a puffer fish, but that's it from here. Then I fish an ice pip from the mines, and then descend to floor 95 to farm for squid ink tomorrow. Also, once I've gone to bed, I'll get level 9 fishing overnight. Day 23 of Spring Gunther visits me first thing in the morning, but I skip the cutscene as I'm in a rush. I go to the mines to farm for squid ink, so that I can cook seafoam puddings, and thus have an easier time with the hardest fish. This is actually my third try with this, the last two times I farmed squid kids until 4pm and got nothing. At all. This time however, I get lucky and get three squid inks, stopping to buy a telephone as Robin walks past her shop counter. At 2pm, I finish farming for squid ink. I pick up a potato from my chest at the farm, buy the hash browns recipe and 30 more coffees from the saloon, and a single oil from Pierre. Before returning to Ginger Island, I fish up two sardines. On the island, I cook three seafoam puddings, as well as a dish of the sea, and ten triple shot espressos. I want to sleep on the island tonight, so I can fish an octopus tomorrow, so the only thing useful I can do for the rest of the night is fish for fishing XP. Day 24 of Spring Today is a flower dance, but instead of dancing with one of the bachelors or bachelorettes, I'm dancing with an octopus. First try! I walk to the farm and go to the sewers, 
as it is too early to get to the desert. But I don't get a mutant carp on the line, so I go to the desert anyway. The first fish I catch at the desert is a scorpion carp, and I catch it first try. I catch a sand fish shortly after, and then buy a single spicy eel. I go back to the sewers and catch the mutant carp first try. The rest of the night is spent squid ink farming, but I only get one. Day 25 of spring. Today is the day that the melons are ready. One day late due to my mistake on spring 19. I reach the island farm at 8am. I show the gourmet frog his melons and harvest the beets, easily getting all five harvesting nuts, as well as enough nuts to open Key's walnut room. I retrieve my fire quartz, magma geodes, copper ore, sap, fiber, Georgia colas, and other miscellaneous blue items from the right hand chest of the island farmhouse. I take these items, as well as the beets from today, and take them to the nut room. Yep, I knew ahead of time what the key quest was. It's necessary for this run to work, as I don't have much time left in the run to complete the longer quests, and knowing the quest beforehand lets me collect items for it in advance. I buy 140 magic baits, warp to the farm, and run to the beach, specifically the left hand side of the leftmost pier, where the night market fish can be caught with magic baits. I catch a red snapper, tilapia, spookfish, squid, albacore, eel, sea cucumber, red mullet, a second octopus, and a blobfish. The last 9 hours of the day is spent trying to get a midnight squid, but I pass out without getting one. I do get farming level 3, 4, and 5 though. Day 26 of spring. I start by fishing at the mountain lake to catch a legend. I eat a dish over the sea so I have a high enough fishing level and switch my rod over to regular bait so that there are less possible fish that can be caught. First try! I run to the river, right in front of Leah's house. I catch a ling cod, walleye, dorado, perch and a salmon. I swap my bait to regular bait catch a shad, put the magic bait back, and run to the bridge above Jojo Mart so that I can catch the angler. I catch a rainbow trout, pike, and the angler. All that is left for river fish is the tiger trout. I spend the last 7 hours trying to get one, but pass out without catching any. At least I have level 10 fishing for tomorrow for slightly easier fishing. Day 27 of Spring I have 7 fish left to catch as of today, and the most important one to catch this morning is the glacier fish. I run to Arrowhead Island, where the glacier fish can be caught. I eat a seafoam pudding and cast my line. First try! I return to the left side of the leftmost pier on the beach. For 6 hours, I fish for a midnight squid, but don't get one. Then, before wheelie shop closes, I retrieve my leftover copper ore and sap from Ginger Island, buy 300 wood from Robin, and smelt my ore at the mines. This lets me craft trap bobbers, as Willie isn't at the shop front. I spend 2.5 hours fishing for a tiger trout, but I don't get one, so I stop fishing for the night so that I can use my magic bait tomorrow to guarantee a midnight squid and tiger trout. I fix the bridge to the right side of the beach, and then go to bed. Day 28 of Spring 54 Magic Bait 2 fish that require it. I start by going to the left hand side of the left noise pier of the beach, and cast my line. My sixth catch of the morning is a midnight squid. I run to the river, south of Jody's house, and cast my line. My seventh catch at the river is a tiger trout. At this point, I don't need my magic bait anymore, but I decide to catch the crimson fish and surgeon today, even though it will be faster in real time to catch them with regular bait tomorrow. At 2.20pm, I get the crimson fish on the line. First try! I go to the mountain lake to fish a sturgeon. At 6pm, I catch a sturgeon. At this point, I'm done with fish 
except for the Slime Jack and the Void Summon, and both are unavailable until Summer 3, when the Railroad becomes available after an overnight earthquake. What will I do for the next two days? Day 3 of summer. Today, the railroad is available for the first time. I go there and get the cutscene with the wizard. That gets me the Dark Talisman quest. With this quest, I enter the sewer, talk to Krobus, and enter the bug lair. It takes a while, but I catch a slime jack right before noon. I run through the bug lair, ignoring the bugs, grab the talisman, and leave. With the talisman, I return to the railroad and enter the swamp. My first fish on the line is a void salmon, and once I've caught it, I've caught all 67 fish and get the Master Angler achievement. This run was made possible with my experience in the All Starters run, where I got every fish by summer 10, 7 days later than in this run, in a run where I had to do other things like complete the museum and marry someone. However, it was surprisingly close. Only two days of leeway between the third last fish caught and the two fish only available from Summer 3 onwards. I wasn't originally planning on rushing entry to Ginger Island to the degree that I did in this run, but it did prove very helpful in the end, even if I couldn't make it by Spring 12. Speaking of Spring 12 Ginger Island, I definitely don't think that I can achieve it with the strategies used in the run. I could achieve better results in a few ways, such as utilizing step manipulation to guarantee a best luck day on day 5, or beneficial dish of the day items like spicy eels or lucky lunches, or even ditching fishing entirely in favor of clay farming. These strategies are strategies that I don't want to be doing, due to the amount of tedium involved, which means that challenges that require a day 12's Ginger Island are out, unless I come up with a better way to do it, which likely won't be soon. The last thing to consider is the 1.6 update. This run was recorded before the 1.6 update was released, which means that I didn't know how 1.6 would affect the run. To keep this video as spoiler free as I can, I'll just say that the earliest day that all fish can be caught by is still Summer 3, and the run would not be that different overall. In other words, I'm not doing another all fish run in 1.6 anytime soon. So that's it, thanks for watching. The next video will either be another Stardew video, or something completely different. I don't know yet. Subscribe to find out.